Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. as always, I hope that this podcast finds you well. Now, this week, I had the wonderful opportunity of interviewing Lewis Hollis from America, and she is the founder of uh, Shame Guilt, which I thought was a very interesting concept. I'd interviewed her a couple of years ago for my Ultimate Emotional Health Summit, and she was a joy to engage with. And um, you'll, if, if you're only just hearing her for the first time, you didn't get a chance to hear on the summit, then of course, you can still go and um, get details and watch all of the speakers but I wanted to to bring her back because I, I do believe the subject of shame guilt or guilt shame however you you want to put those terms together um, they're very insidious and they're very damaging and I think what has been clear in in the work that I've been doing over the past seven eight years is how it sits like a, a fungus like a, a dry rot or a dampness like it does under the, the foundations of a property uh, shame and guilt can sit deep down in the recesses of um, you know many people that I, that I work with, hence why my work has evolved more into focusing on embracing emotions and the emotional component. Because if you are, if you've had shame and guilt projected upon you from a very young age, maybe because it, that's what happened to your parents and what happened to their parents, and it has come down through the ancestral line, and it's just uh, you know people aren't even aware that they're doing it. Um, it can it can set up deep down in the foundations of who a person is at their core, when actually it's not their shame and it's not their guilt to keep. And um, hence why I say I think it's a very important subject and uh, Lewis is just a joy to speak to. And um, you'll hear, uh, I'll come back on at the end and share a little bit more. But, um, you know, I, I just marvel at her energy, where how far she's come and you'll hear her story and also you know, she's about to celebrate her 80th birthday and she's got more energy than some 20 year olds. I think she's going to be going ice skating or rollerblading for her birthday. Isn't that just like so inspiring? So I do hope that you enjoy the interview. Uh, she does cover some sensitive topics. So please be mindful of that. If you're feeling overly sensitive, then, uh, you know, just just be mindful that she does cover some some topics that could be sensitive. Uh, equally, they're very important subjects uh, that I think need to be talked about a bit more so that there isn't any shame or guilt surrounding them. And um, I do hope that you find this podcast interview inspiring. And again, I'll come on at the end and just share how you can get more information or how you can even start your own journey if you haven't already. But until then, enjoy the interview. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Yeah. How are you doing? I am very well indeed. It's lovely to see you. It's been, what, two or three years, I think, since we last and spoke. We, and we still keep plugging along. And we still keep thriving and flourishing. Yeah. Yes, yes. We yeah. keep moving ahead. Nothing we, stops us. No, as my son was just saying, we're walking the walk and talking the talk. <laughs> How old is your son? He's 20 years old. Wow, that's congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've got a 30 year old daughter and a 20 year old son, and it's uh, been lovely on this journey to share with them kind of what what my realizations and awakenings and awarenesses have been you know oh. as I've gone along so hopefully they can impart all this fantastic wisdom that we're we've had to learn the hard way that they can hopefully learn the easy way and also take it further yes exactly of course yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody's got to start that's why I began what I did do because nobody else was doing it Absolutely. And this is why I wanted to chat with you again, because it's so interesting, the shame guilt or the guilt shame, you know, this this whole how how interwoven it is 
and um, how insidious and and I just think you know again your story is so inspiring as to like where you were physically so so maybe you could start by sharing with people a bit of your background uh you know for for what you're doing and then share like your story because your your physical story of where you were like 20 years ago 30 years ago is much like myself you know yeah and uh that's a tribute to you and you can see that in me and I can see that in you so that's what we're offering today so I want you to lead me where you want me to talk about because as the the shortest podcast I had was five minutes <laughs> the, the longest one was two and a half hours oh <laughs> fantastic so, and then I was even asked to come back so you know shame guilt is such a huge topic, but people don't even realize it because it's incognito. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's why I'm saying, well, let's start giving people kind of background because obviously my podcast listeners are women who um, are suffering from endometriosis, adenomyosis, cysts, fibroids, infertility, that kind of stuff and have probably had this medical condition this disease or, or this you know inflammatory condition probably you know I don't know for, for years anyway if not decades and I think you know your your own I'd love for you to start like where you were 20 30 years ago because you were incapacitated weren't you yes. by by what was oh yeah on? I was suicidal I, well, anyway we'll begin Tar start me out and I'll start <laughs> yeah so yeah so share where you were before okay um I've always been in the health field as a, as a child, I started as a nurse's aide in the hospital and to me, health was everything. And I don't understand why, but perhaps maybe I had so many health issues unknowingly. Mm -hmm. I have this attitude of keep going. And Wendy and I were just talking about how we just keep going because yeah. we keep going. Um, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, some people don't have that. Mm. And um, that's what I want to relay today, that we all keep going. And we may not know the answer, but I found out something along the way of my 79 years. Answers come, be no, excuse me, solutions come before the problem. Mm. We don't have a problem and then look for the solution. We've been given the solution. We just have to find it within ourselves or within our friends or whatever. And solutions are always there. And then we have the problem. So we don't have to say, oh, I'm so alone. I have this problem. And, you know, this person can help. I don't know what to do here and there. But always know the solution is there. You just have to be like a detective yeah. trying yeah. to find it. So I didn't I didn't have that wisdom at 10 and 11 years old. I just kept on going like we are going. I didn't really know too much about my inner life until I was around 50 years old. I was on the um, merry-go-round, I keep going. And I was very um, effective. I helped start the one of the first kidney hemodialysis unit in the United States. Amazing. And I began home dialysis also because the insurances weren't paying for hospital. And so I taught people how to use the machines at home. Amazing. I still don't believe I did all that. But, you know, there's a need and you continue doing yeah. that. And I lectured throughout the United States. I started the American nephrology nurses and technicians association and that's still viable i started that in 1971 and it's still working so um i left there after 12 years because i needed a break and that's when transplantation and everything was coming along yeah. so um and why did I do that is because I was put in a position to help heal somebody, some people who had no alternative. And there was a lot of research to do that mm -hmm. and how to use all my, and as a nurse, 
I had to do different things than I was trained to. So I had to up my game and I wasn't covered by nursing service. I was covered by the director of the hospital. Yeah. See, you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, long story short, I eventually married and wanted to have children. And I was unable, I was probably what you call infertile because it took me like a year to get pregnant and yeah. uh, so forth and so on. And I had uh, two miscarriages at three months and one at eight months. And yeah. we're talking about 50 years ago that the child would have lived. Yeah. But at that time they didn't have the neonatal care. Obviously, there's a lot of guilt, shame there. No. Yeah. Eventually, God gave me three beautiful children, and they all did well. It was very interesting, the three girls. But anybody that raises three girls, they'll understand my <laughs> However, I had 30 years of migraine headaches, and I just, you know, couldn't do what I wanted to do. My body didn't work, but I kept on going. Eventually, uh, my children were going to college, and I just collapsed. Mm. I was so burden with depression and I'm thinking why am I so depressed I mean I had this incredible life I mean I still have it and I'm just depressed I can't even get out of bed yeah and um I, I've been to as a nurse and all the doctor said you probably have a year or two to live this is about 54 because oh. my my kidneys were not working properly Mm. And that's because of all the medication I took because of the migraine headaches. Mm. In fact, they just wanted to give me more. Uh, my, I had mitral valve prolapse. I think people know that you have a leaky valve. And that was from my father who had heart surgery. Mm. And that was not cared for, um, even though I worked in the open heart team. But I was like, at that time, 50, 60 years ago, there were many damaging effects of cardiac surgery. Yeah. They were not as good as they are today. I'm just saying that, yeah, open heart surgery is a lot better and it's almost um, normal. Mm. But 50 years ago, it wasn't. And I'm like, because most of them had problems. Anyway, so here I was and severe pain. And I was so um, crippled from the um scoliosis that was also in my family mm -hmm. that my lungs were collapsing and because of my lungs were like uh, um I walked like 45 degrees almost gosh yeah. so obviously your lungs aren't going to expand so the doctors were correct but I didn't believe them yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense but yeah. I didn't believe them now when I said there's always solutions one of my friends, very good friends, moved to the West Coast in um, Arizona, Sedona. And she said, Lois, why don't you come visit me? And I went, you know what? That's a great idea because my kids are right in college right now and mom can leave and so forth. And so I visited her and she went, oh, my God, you look terrible. And I go, I look, <laughs> I know this. She said, why don't you? Thanks for stating that, yes. Well, she was a very, she's a New York fashion lady. So you know, you expect her to say, darling, what happened to you? And I'd say, <laughs> darling, I can't walk. I can't breathe. And I, you know, my kidneys aren't working. So I'm not too, I'm, she's I'm not in a great place. Yeah. Yeah. And so she was correct. She wasn't a bad friend. So she took my hand and she said, I discovered a wonderful doctor. He's a chiropractor, but he's not like normal. He just like does things. She's because I had bleeding from my nose. And I live in New York and we went to Beth Israel. We went to all the best places. She was the direct, she's Pat, she's lives in heaven now. She was director of, of marketing for um, Estee Lauder. I mean, she had, you know what I'm saying. So you, anyway, darling, they just couldn't do anything. I just got on the plane because I heard about this doctor and I just flew there holding my Kleenexes in the blood. And, and she said, he adjusted my skull and I'm fine. Wow. I picked up the phone and I said, children, come visit me in Sedona. And when you come, please bring my car. I will not leave this <laughs> area. <laughs> Amazing. So she said, you're, so he, I went there and uh, he said, well, you're not going to die 
from your scoliosis, but your heart is not working. I'm going to myself. Yeah, tell me something. <laughs> but he didn't do x-rays or anything. He was just intuitive. Mm. So he just ch touched my body and he moved a couple bones and I could breathe. Mm. And I went, whoa, is that what it means? So I got out of the office and walked around the mountains. Wow. I mean, crippled and everything, but I was breathing. Yeah. So I went back and he said, I can help you, but you got to live close. You have very many problems. And I'm going, die, you're telling me or something? <laughs> I got to so, live in this body, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So eventually um, I came back home because, you know, one needs to come back from vacation. And um, uh, a week later, the shoulders in and on. I wish I was with this doctor, but like he's 3,000 miles. So like I can take a plane every day, right? Yeah. I have that amount of money. So, and fixed my shoulder. The next day I, I'm like, wow, who is this person? But this is nice. I like this. So long story short, uh, I went back again. And so, and I decided to, I'm sitting in the kitchen. Okay. Three girls are in college. One senior, one is a, a junior, and one's a freshman. Yeah, They don't come home that much. I don't know if you had that experience, and I'm talking to some mothers. They'll come home the first month. When it's their laundry so, done or when they're... <laughs> they put the laundry. Do you know, I even heard of a guy mailing his laundry to his mother and have it ready when he comes to visit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so you get the picture. So mom can leave. <clears throat> But I'm sitting there in a rocking chair and they had two, three cats. The kids had cats. And I'm going, stay here because I have friends and you know, I can't breathe, can't walk, but you know, I'm here. Or I can just go live there. But if I live there, I have to sell the house. I can't, I don't have the money to have like a couple of houses. So I'm sitting in the rocking chair, seriously. Live or pass, I mean, die. Or possibly live. Yeah. Die. Hard choice. Possibly live. I'm yeah. serious. I mean, I, it sounds kind of remote at this point, but it's like you're, people do live that way when we're very ill. And um, so <laughs> I sold the house and moved. And I put everything in storage for the girls and I saved all their. Um, achievement letters and their trophies and their baby dolls and it it took three months Wendy to pack it all up and make the kids each happy and so forth anyway so eventually I did move and um, he was able to uh, realign my body and um, I had see at that point I could not go outside in the daytime I could only go outside at night. And if anybody has brain injuries, I think they would understand that the sunlight adds extra heat to a ready overburdened skull. Mm. So I was not, I thank God that stores were open at, in the evening because otherwise I couldn't go outside. That's how severe my headaches were. Yeah. So I had all these brain traumas because I was severely abused. And then the memories start surfacing. And as you know, as you get chiropractic or that type of adjustments, the memories get triggered. And so I was like, wow, wow. I was thrown down the steps. I remember then all of a sudden I saw myself as like a, a one-year-old. Somebody was holding my feet and hitting my head on the floor. Mm -hmm. Gosh. I mean, I know it's like, oh my, no wonder I had headaches. Oh, so sorry to hear that. Um, so we're talking about major abuse and that my body showed it. Mm. And plus the, the um, scoliosis from my mother and the heart valve from my father and so forth and so on. But I was healing. And then the emotional issues start coming up, as you know. Mm. And I was so depressed that I couldn't even get out of bed. And that's like, I mean, talking about that now, it's like, yeah, it, it, you know, so we all can be dragged down 
Mm. And so when I was thinking that the world would be better off without me, I called my friend who's a psychiatrist. <laughs> Good idea. Because I was suicidal. And then, you know, I got in a woman's group and we talked a little bit and then I felt better. But Wendy, I was not happy. Mm. And I wasn't suicidal, but believe me, I wasn't the lowest go-go girl. Yeah. One person in a woman's group said, Lois, what do you do about shame? And I went, ah, oh, that's an interesting word. Mm. Here, I'm loaded with it. <clears throat> Nobody ever mentioned it in therapy. Nobody ever talked about it. And I said, ah, oh, now I have this detective mind that won't let me alone until I figure it out. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but anyway, my mind. Oh, it's is such a blessing because you wouldn't be here without it. Neither of us. It's, would just, be it's just going and going. And um, one psyche said, you would make the best detective. And I said, uh -huh. probably, but I got to detect my own body <laughs> to find out what's going on on it. <clears throat> so I went to the library. This is 1999. We don't have the computer where you plug in shame. We have to go through the card index, okay? Trailblazer, Wendy. So John Bradshaw was in when I could find. He says it's sickness of the soul. Yeah. So I went, hmm. So my mind started wondering. To backtrack in my remembering, I remember dying as a child, maybe five or six. Then all of a sudden the image came, I'm not mentioned who, twisted my neck, threw me on the floor and sat on my head. So my neck was broken. See, one, two, and three were broken. Gosh. Obviously you don't live through that. We all know that. But I, I just remember another dimension. It isn't like I can tell you who I talked to and everything. I just remember being pulled mm. back. I remember I can feel it on my arm being pulled back. And ever since that time, I've had access to other dimensions of learning. Yeah. And, you know, I that's all I can say. And because I was extremely dyslexic mm -hmm. in school with all the brain traumas and so forth and so on. So much so that my, I, I, then I did remember my parents being called into school. I think I was in the first or second grade and they told me, told my parents, I was there, that I was an idiot child Ugh. because I work, I only write backwards, dyslexia and she can't read. And when I looked at a book, it was all, the words would always move and that's Aaron syndrome. Mm -hmm. So they said, she is an idiot child who's stupid and cannot learn. So we as a Catholic school will keep her in school, but she must sit at the back of the classroom. Oh my goodness. And we don't expect her to take any exams or anything and put your efforts into your other children. Oh, gosh. Ouch. Oh my, that's, that's well, I'm glad I remembered it much later in my life because I wouldn't have done the kidney unit. <laughs> oh gosh, the cruelty, the thoughtlessness, the nastiness of some people, especially with you. Well, but that's 1950, um, you know, they didn't know, they, you know, yeah. and so that what they did was they put me in front of the class to read a book and everybody had a chance to read. So Lois picks the book up and the words are all moving. Remember, I have a creative mind. Yep. So if the words are moving, I just turn the book around and maybe they'll stop, right? I mean, it's a logical sense, right? What? Absolutely love it. I love that turning it around, literally. So the, the nun, the Hoi nun comes over, slaps me in the face. How dare you? I'm going, I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> anyway, so that's my schooling. However, I just knew things, Wendy. Mm. I got hundreds and this and that. And I, 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 only thing I can say, I was in tune. And I 
drove my parents crazy to tap dance. I just had to dance. And finally they gave up and I tap danced uh, when I was like in the third or fourth grade, all the way through high school. Lovely. And I think the right and left brain kind of healed because I was reading and doing well. But tap dancing saved my life. How about that? Fantastic. I still tap in. <laughs> I love that. So I love that. Yeah. So that's showing you why I was able to come up with a new idea that wasn't on the internet. Mm. Because yeah. so I, George Bradshaw is, you know, really well known in that understanding how shame is manifested. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it sort of um, lit up things in my brain to put it together. So. I was so happy I was tap dancing because I didn't have to go to therapy for anxiety and depression and anger and suicide and not feeling good enough. All I had to do was got rid of shame guilt. Mm. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Not sure how to do it, but it's really cool. So yeah. I learned and I at that point I was doing something uh, similar to the inner child work. I was, you know, depression. I would say, hi, depression. I got tired of talking to therapists. I said, I talked to my depression. So I say, hi, depression. How are you? And I telepathically heard words and mm -hmm. saw things. And then, you know, who's talking to me this negative? And that was my inner critic. And mm -hmm. I said, who are you? He says, I'm King. I go, okay, hi, King. So like I'm talking to you, Wendy, I was talking to myself. And that's how I found out where the shame guilt hides mm. and so forth and so on. So I just like, you know, learned how to get rid of it and help the inner parts. Of me. And all of a sudden, the chiropractor healing, I call him a shaman, could even heal me deeper. Yeah, because I was releasing the emotional aspect. Mm. And uh, when I went to the chiropractor, because my depression part had scoliosis, I didn't have Lois. My depression part did. So when I went to the chiropractor, I took my depression part. Her name was um, Sally. I took Sally D and I became Sally yeah. for him to adjust me. Mm. Wow. Just like that was healing, healing, healing. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was amazing. So people said, Lois, what are you? I'm in Sedona. Sedona is a place of learning. And well, it's changed a lot now. But, you know, 20 years ago, it was more of a um, sacred place where people were trying, were wanting, came there to heal. Yeah. And um, they came to me and they said, Lois, why are you so, you know, what happened? I said, I'm talking to myself. They said, can we do that? And I said, I guess so. So I taught them what I was doing. And they, within, I don't know, two or three sessions, got well. And I taught them how to do it. So it was like, they didn't have to come to me all the time. They would call if they got in trouble, but yeah. it was working. And then the mothers and the grandmothers and the kids start coming to me. And someone said, Lois, I says, what? You should charge for this. I said, charge for what? I'm just telling people how to talk to themselves. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so I started to um, help many people. And I was so excited, Wendy, yeah. that um, the local people wanted me to talk. Mm. And so I went there to talk. And they said, what is your topic? I said, shame, guilt. They go, oh, we don't talk about it. That doesn't exist. I got rid of all that my shame. I have no I, that. But you're so happy. Why don't you talk about happiness and how to be happy and joyful and positive? I said, if you can't get rid of the shame and guilt, you're not going to be happy. Well, you can, but it's like a struggle. And as you're not going to win, you're just going to fight with yourself. I said, the unconscious and the conscious are fighting. Yeah. And you got to make peace. And you can do all the tapping, you can do all the talking, you can do the affirmations. But if you don't go in there and make peace with the fighters inside of you, yeah, you're not going to be happy. Well, you can, but it'll take a lot of alcohol and other things to make you happy. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to talk, Wendy. And it really bothered me. 
Yeah. And they said, you have to change your, your MO. I said, what are you talking about? She said, they call, you call yourself a shame guilt educator. Ugh, that's just going to be put in the trash. I, I want to help you with marketing, but you're never going to get anywhere. And I said, but that's who I am. And I need to put those words out for people. Mm, yeah. So the pandemic hit and then everybody has to sit home with the shame guilt that they say they don't have. Mm. And now, yeah, boom, start lightening up. <laughs> Amazing. And it, it, well, it's great because people are now more in touch with their life because they don't have to run to the subway and all this stuff. And they're not, that commuting time really, um, well, you work a lot at home, you understand um, commuting and um, as a whole nother story. So that's my story. And what I've come to learn, and this may be um, old hat for you, but I want to you know, make it into a way that's more cohesive, that the reason that shame guilt is with us and it sticks, it has a glue, it's glue, it sticks to us, is because it's wanting us, it's needing us. We do not need shame guilt. Yeah. It serves no purpose. And the people that say shame is bad and guilt is good, you don't have a healthy poison. No. Shame makes more guilt, guilt makes more shame. Yeah. It's shame, guilt. It's not shame and guilt, it's a coin. Mm. Coin has heads and it has tails. We have shame, guilt. Shame on one side, guilt on the other. It's just certain names. That's all it is. It's shame, guilt. I thought and it was once, interesting. I was watching one of your videos and you talked about procrastination being um, uh, like an internal shame, guilt, which I thought was, was really interesting. <clears throat> In my book, and I just put this up, shame, guilt, names. Mm. Depression, sadness, procrastination, underachieving, genocide, anger, indifference, embarrassment, arrogance, cheating, PTSD, eating disorders, bullying, moody, regret, loneliness, grief, self-abuse, pity, hatred, suffering, lying, criminal, all negative emotions, mm. all negative emotions yeah. come from shame guilt. So that's why I was tap dancing. Just get rid of the fire and now and get your body moving to try and move what had been projected onto you. Correct. Now, now I've had people not feeling that this was correct. So I said, okay, let's do depression. And if you talk about it and see the things in your life, you see it was caused by shame, guilt experience. If you go to sadness, you can go to the you know, deep down, but you know, we don't have that time here, but if you want to take any negative emotion mm. and go backward in time and see where you got it from. And it was a shame guilt effect. And, and it's, it's so true. And it's fascinating, isn't it? I think, I think what, this is why I wanted you on to chat uh, to, you know, cause I know that a lot of women with endometriosis, you know, you know, you've just, you've described there your past and your history and all this awareness about what had happened to you when you're younger. And then as you got older, how this showed up in your body and literally crippled your body and affected you physically. And then that, that inner push, pusher calling you, your instincts, intuition is like, there's something more to this than meets the eye, you know? And, you know, I really, really respect and admire you for, for having that curiosity and invariably the women that are following me or are on this, they have that, they have that little, that little nuance, that little light, little sparkle, little essence of like, there has to be another way. There has to be a reason. And I think with shame, guilt, it's such an interesting, it makes so much sense, doesn't it? You know, we're, we're well, it's true. true. It it's is true. true. It is true. Yeah. But, but I think what I like about you saying, calling it for what it is, and probably the reason people didn't like you talking about it, because there's discomfort, because <laughs> therefore there has to be an origination, an originator, an originator of that shame guilt somewhere that has been projected and put upon you, you know, so that's probably why some people are uncomfortable even talking about it, but it makes so much sense. Yes. Shame, guilt, energy. 
Mm -hmm. Only has one defect. It dissolves in detection. Mm, absolutely. About that. Yeah. It's, the jig is up. And this is what Lois is all about. The jig's up, people. The jig's I, up. I like that phrase of it dissolves uh, from detection. And I think that's it. That Even you talking about speaking to your various parts is something that I... I encourage our clients to do, you know, uh, name their part, identify their energy, their needs, their wants. And, and but what that's exactly what you're doing is identifying the shame, guilt, even the memory, whatever. Once you have that light on it, the light on it and the awareness on it changes it. And then it has this kind of compounding effect, doesn't it? Of your yes. life. Oh, no wonder I think that. And the jig is up. Yeah. Now, you may have a better term, which is great. I ask people, just use whatever words work for you. That's what works for me. Remember Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz? She walks yeah. up the yellow brick road. Yeah. <gasps> Great anticipation of the wizard. Oh. Yeah. Here Toto pulls the curtain back. Yeah. And what do you see? A little old man, bald and gray, with a big, big silver machine, puffing green smoke. Mm. Yeah. What happens? Shame, guilt, energy is a puff of green smoke. Yeah. That's all it is. Mm. And the jig's up. Dorothy gets her power back and comes back home. Yeah. So we have to be Toto. Yeah. Be a Toto. Every time you say you feel shame, these are suggestions. Anytime people feel that shame, guilt, you go, I'm Toto. Pew. I'm Toto. It's Toto. I like that. That can be your new tagline. <laughs> yeah, be a Toto. Girl, a, be a Toto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I'm going to have a podcast finally, and I'm going to call Toto Moments. <laughs> Love it. But that's it, isn't it? And I, and I think what I, I'm loving hearing too is that you're being very creative with the uncovering process because sometimes when you are immersed in those feelings of shame, guilt, for example, you can. It feels so much shame and so much guilt that, and as you say, they're two sides. It's like, all the same. Point, yeah, that you can get paralyzed. You know, you are you, paralyzed. Yeah, you are. It's called shame, guilt, hypnosis. Mm. Okay, yeah. we all, you and me, still. Mm. You know, we're all in shame, guilt, hypnosis. We're paralyzed. Unless you can figure out, unless you go, oh, I know what that person or that thing's trying to do to me. I'm not going to take that on. So it's interesting that you you can feel that shame, guilt, paralysis sometimes. And then you're like, whoa, that isn't to me. That's projection or that's past. And you can really kind of, that's when it allows you, as you yeah. say, to do the toto on it, pull back the curtain and, and, and get a sense of what on earth is that and see it for the reality. Because I think even just you describing your childhood, you know, all our childhoods perhaps weren't weren't great, you know, and then, uh, you know, that's been projected onto us. And then we think that we aren't great because we're carrying the guilt or we were the ones in the family that break the ancestral line of, of all this that's been passed down. Right. An important thing to remember, it's not the event. Mm. It's the shame, guilt in the event. Absolutely. And that's why people say, oh, I want to get rid of my inner critic. No, the inner I critic so is agree good. agree with you. I was telling but, my son I was coming on to speak to you, and, and this is why I love you, because there's far too much new age, dangerous claptrap out there about death to the critic and death to the ego. No, they're parts of you that are trying to protect you. You can't cut off your head to be happy or to be beautiful. No. And I don't want to do that. You can't, but you need to take the shame, guilt out of the ego they need to take the shame guilt out of the inner critic you need to get the shame guilt out of the person event that killed me yeah the event is there but it doesn't have the charge absolutely so that's what's so important that people go oh i had one client who called me and said lois i'm lost i go okay <laughs> How can I help? I've known him for quite a while. He said, I meditated and meditated and meditated, and I got rid of the ego. I got rid of all of this. That was, I don't, I only know your telephone number. <laughs> but he got rid of it all, but he got rid of the events to get rid of the shame. And the events still came back with the shame. You just have to get rid of the shame. You can't. I don't have a past. 
You can't do that. Yeah. You have a past. I love I love my past. I don't love the shame guilt in the past and that hitting and the beating and all that. But I get rid of the energy of the shame guilt. But I think I think so few people uh, appreciate or um, or they underestimate how our past can play out in our present. Oh, it is. It's so compartmentalized and and shame guilt in particular it's very insidious it's it's kind of like putting drops of poison in a well you know it's not quite obvious on the surface you know and again you know as what showed up in your body and can happen with women with endometriosis there's this disease that's lying deep down and if there are toxic people around about you reinforcing or or triggering the shame guilt or jumping or you know sniffing out or sensing that you have shame guilt about that who can actually play and prey on those sort of elements as well of course now i think it might um love energy we all know that and what does that do that gives us happiness and joy and confidence we're geniuses we love you, we collaborate, we're giving, we're loving, we're receiving. It has what? I don't know, a hundred different emotions from the love energy. Yeah. Shame guilt energy gives us all the ones that I was reading. Yeah. You know what, Wendy? That's all there is. There ain't no more. It's no. just love energy and shame guilt energy. That's all there is. There ain't no more. It's that it's simple. But what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, even just calling it out helps people identify that there's there's some toxic, heavy, negative, suffocating energy in there that is not theirs to keep. It is, you know, the idea is to release that, you know, to identify it, to observe, to observe it, identify it, observe it and release and it. You have to release it. But in order to release it, you have to find it. It's like I get rid of all this. It don't work. You have to find it to do it yourself. Like I people say. You have a computer and you get the computer virus. What happens to your computer? Don't even talk about it, right, Wendy? <laughs> it's a horrible well, it's thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you see the computer virus coming into your computer? No. Exactly. But you know what happened to your computer. So what do you do? You get a, com hopefully you have a few friends and that are tech and they do a computer virus removal program and that's what we have to do we have to do a shame guilt removal program but anyway the reason that we become so debilitated from the shame guilt energy because the shame guilt energy is negative and you and most of the people i think you uh deal with understand about us being an energy being yeah. We have the meridians and we have energy. We are an energy being. So what happens? The computer is an energy instrument. The shame, guilt, negative energy comes into us. You stupid jerk. Why are you doing that? She's a dumb kid. Leave her alone. I mean, those comments have energy and they mm -hmm. come into you, me, and turn our positive emotions to negative ones. Each emotion has a positive orientation and a negative yeah. we're already wonderful we're already happy we're already joyful we already are but the shame guilt came in and turned the knob yeah. uh, compassion turns to depression passion turns to anger and we get rid of the shame guilt they go back to the positive that's why i was dancing it's like man this is works i don't have to take each individual emotion because i'll be dead before i'm well <laughs> yeah, exactly but the very fact that you're able to identify that and then uh, and i remember when we when i interviewed the last time that you were saying like how you'd gone from this 45 degree angle hunched over you know crippled debilitated in bed and and now you have more energy now lightness brightness than than you've ever had because you've yes. been able to identify and release, you know, through, you know, the work that you do with shame guilt. Yeah. And the more that you uh, work with acknowledging what happened takes a while. I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years and I'm still like, oh, they caught me. You know, so we are inbred. We are mm -hmm. generational inbred with shame guilt energy because that's what they taught us. Okay. Yeah. 
and the government reinforces it, the religions reinforce it, our friends reinforce it, our enemies reinforce it. And that's the story. So hopefully in about 10 or 20 years, we will be able to breathe easier because most people like Wendy and so forth, other people are spreading it out and saying this and that, and we're going to have it easier, but it's always harder on the beginning people. That's why I have the shame guilt stoppers on my Facebook page. And I have a book called How to Be a Jewish Mother, written in 1940 uh, something. Anyway, I picked this up at the thrift store. And how to guilt your children into obedience. Oh my God. No, it's seriously, if you want, I can um, oh. scan couple pages and it it tells you how guilt is used to make your children obey and be a good how to guilt your children and be a good jewish mother oh i'm my serious God. it actually says it, word for word i can't email you the book but i can mail you a couple pages and this is true written by a jewish mother and how to be a, a very lovely training manual oh my lord i mean right there if you ever wanted it in print it's in print people didn't believe me i said i'm xeroxing well copying it on the page and i emailed them the pages because they know us i can't i said i did not write this book but some of my family found it <laughs> Gosh, I know. But isn't that, isn't that so interesting? I mean, you, you know, you mentioned religion as well. Again, you know, religion oh. was originally designed, as you were saying earlier, as hope and connection to inner selves, higher power, you want to call it. But then you get then get some people who then either, you know, fragmented off in religion and then use that to shame and guilt. You know, I mean, like there's the Catholic shame. There's all the, you know, that, that you hear the religions reinforcing the shame. But you know, to actually see that there's a book on how to use it to control and manipulate and bring up good children is any wonder as adults, especially, I mean, this is the good thing about the internet now is there's so much more information about it. So people can, like you say, they think there's something in this, you know, that really relates to me. And I don't want this. This is not mine to keep. And I applaud you, Wendy, because you said the shame, not my shame. You cannot mm. say mine. And yeah. if you do, no, 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 no. I mean, I, people that are speaking and they say my, and I have to stop them. I said, you don't bite me. I don't care. You cannot say my thing. You cannot yeah. own it. It's not yours to own. But you now, can really feel it, can you? You can feel when someone. Of course you can. Of course you can. I, I use the analogy like a box. Someone's trying to give you a box of shame and guilt and put it on your lap. And I've talked with some of our clients going, just say thank you very much for your box and your gift, but I'm going to give it back to you. I'm not going to hold on to this because this is not mine in which it's to have yours. my yeah. It's yours. Yeah. And so you're you're getting the picture. And that's why I became a filmmaker because yeah. I had to show it. Now, yeah. shame guilt energy comes into us like a virus and it's mm -hmm. negative. Why does it do that? Mm -hmm. It does it because it survives on our light mm. it needs our light energy to live yeah that's why it's so hard to get rid of it because it's sucking you yeah. it's a some of our very eloquent hosts say the shame guilt leech the shame guilt vampire yeah. the alien invader the evil wizard that messes with your mind so yeah you can name it anything you want but it is a leech yeah it's an energy like a computer bar so when it comes into us it turns our positive emotions to negative ones mm -hmm. and it turns our mind into a confused state so when if you're in a confused state you're probably in shame guilt never yeah. make a decision when you're in confused mind or shame guilt it will always be wrong mm -hmm. But it's it's because even hearing you talk, you know, uh, obviously a lot of shame, guilt, and we all know this, don't we, just intuitively was put upon us as you're just reading from that book from 
from a young age, you know? So not only do we have to deal with the day-to-day or the new experiences or new people, new environments that we're encountering and people trying to manipulate, control, uh, influence, whatever, through shame, guilt, or whatever. And we've all been there. I mean, look at the newspaper headlines, look at the, the radio and the TV headlines. I literally don't turn any news, radio, I don't buy any papers because it, before you know it, they're like, shame, guilt is just oozing out of all, all of them. I know. And now you can see it. And you, I, I haven't watched TV for so many years. It's like, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, so the shame, guilt alters our frequency, alters the way our liver works, alters the way our ovaries work. And it turns them from a positive orientation, which is healing, to a negative one of disease. Mm. Now, you can hear the same shame guilt comment, and I can use the same guilt comment. And if we're stupid and don't know anything, your lungs will be affected, like you have a hard time breathing, and I'll have stomach pain. It just depends your weakest organ. That's all it is. It ain't no more. Yeah. Okay, we all react differently. That's why it's such a, ooh, ooh, what? it's you, you'll react differently because it, you have the weakest organ being affected. Yeah. But I think, as you said, I mean, we're energetic beings anyway, and this is not a woo-woo conversation. This is just a fact. We are affected by- Some people, people don't understand that yet, but you know, you're above yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that's it. So, so you're right. And, and this was like, this was like way out of my realm of understanding, you know, 15 years ago, but now it's like, it makes so much sense. Cause you, you and I can walk into a room and we'd probably be able to, you know, we, we can look around the room and go, Oh, that person's had an argument. That person's feeling sad, depressed. That person's super happy. We could pick up the energy, the aura, what you want to call it. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay. But just don't do the shame guilt. <laughs> but that's it. The shame guilt is, it's very manipulative and dark and negative energy. Well, and- it's there to make you The whole purpose of shame, guilt upon this planet Mm. is to keep it into like a prison planet. We um, are not free. We think we are, but we're not. But that's a whole nother discussion. Shame, guilt, energy. Shame, guilt, energy is said through the words. It's said, Mm. you know, through the pulpit. And I have um, sent you. Um, David Hawkins' Map of Consciousness. Mm. And you can share that any way you'd like. Now, David Hawkins lives in heaven right now, but he put each emotion to an energy number. Mm. Yeah. The highest being enlightenment, which is 700,000, seven with five zeros mm. to the 30th power. And there is such a number, according to my mathematician son-in-law, okay? <laughs> All those zeros, okay? That's enlightenment, the high shooting depth. Then it goes down to love and joy and happiness and giving. And serenity. And yeah. peace and, you know, you can look at it and you can share. At 200, mm. it goes negative. We get anger and hatred and revenge and depression and so forth and so on. Mm. The lowest number is shame, guilt. Mm. Comes in at 10. Interesting, yeah. That's the lowest frequency or energy that a human can survive in. Mm. There's nothing after shame, guilt. Yeah. And you it's only- such a beautiful energy, isn't it? I mean, you think of so many, you you know, you know, ourselves, we had our journey was that we were so crippled physically because of, of those energies. And and the, the people that are stuck in that energy through perhaps no fault of their own, you can see it. You can see how the whole spirit has collapsed. The whole physical form has just, you know, crippled under the weight of that so it's really interesting you say that that is 10 that's like the lowest energy scale and that's why suicide is usually preceded by i'm not good enough yeah yeah suicide's very rampant right now so guilt is very rapid so when people say oh guilt is a moral 
virtuous emotion because yeah. now you can repent for your sins. No, you'll kill yourself. That's how you repent for your sins. Absolutely. And I'm glad, I'm glad that we're having these kind of conversations because I think they're, they're candid and they're, they're common sense. But again, especially as women, and I know it affects men too. I have a son, I understand like, you know, you know, his energy and, and who he is. He's a lovely person and how men have challenges too. certain sensitive men. Oh, definitely. But it's more, the more sensitive you are, yeah. the more shame guilt affects you. That's and all the more, like a sponge, you absorb it because you are so sensitive. You have the higher. Right. Yeah. But the good news is the bad news is you, you, it goes right in because you don't have those filters. Yeah. They say, oh, toughen up. No, I don't toughen up. I, I feel mm. the bad. The good, bad news is that the good news is that it comes out that easy. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. And you take somebody very dense. You know, we'd be having a conversation for years and they finally get it, which is OK. It's OK. <laughs> but people like you and me and others, we need to know this because we need to throw it away because it cripples us so deeply. Exactly. Because we're so connected and so sensitive and so aware of what's happening. And, and, and this they need people like you and Guy and I and all the other light people. We need your light to yeah. retard the shame guilt. Now. Awareness mm. is the key. That's what we're talking about. We're needing to be aware. Now, a lot of times people are in guilt and struggle and they're just in the guilt hole. Mm. So I'm saying never, ever be in guilt. Yeah. Never, ever. You can be angry at somebody. You can hate them. You can be depressed. I'm not saying that's the best way, but it's anything, anything. Yeah. Any emotion yeah. is better than guilt because guilt gives you no solutions. Now, I had a client recently who was extremely guilt-ridden because her mother passed away from alcoholism and she was unable as a daughter to help her out of it. But you know, and I know, if a person is not willing or able to heal, you can't it probably it. won't happen. So I suggested her to be regretful. At least it's higher than guilt, right? You can be regret that you couldn't help your mother. So with the regret, yeah, she was able to uh, be creative and have different plans and symposiums and events for people who were alcoholic and how they could get out. She did the same thing with them that she did with her mother, but the other people were receptive. Yeah. So she brought her information out. Amazing. Yeah. Regret gives you solutions. Guilt has no solutions. Yeah. And when in my own journey, after I got rid of a lot of the guilt and shame, I began to channel different dimensions. And they're called them, I call them light readings, spirit readings. And those readings help you raise your vibration. It doesn't say Step one, step two, step three is just reading about love and light energy and it raises your vibration. So if you're in guilt and you don't have any friends and you don't know what to do, go on my website and I have now is the time you can download 30 pages of my light readings. And that is it going to cure you? No, but you got to get out of guilt. Love it. And well, you just got to get out of guilt. Well, maybe you could share your, your web address um, so people can, can go to yeah, it. Yeah, Lois Hollis, L-O-I-S-H-O-L-L-I-S.com. And I, mean, I have three websites on my website. So you can just see other websites. I have my films and um, Making U-Turn and uh, Truth is Simple. And I have a very active tech. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's what I'm about. Now, there's another process of how to do this, but the main thing, and I think that's what we're trying to do today, is raise the awareness that there is such a thing as shame, guilt, energy. Now, I heard um, part of a podcast that one of my friends who's very well connected to a lot of stars and influential people and all that, so, oh, well, see, oh, you know, see what they got. And they said, never use hatred it's so bad you can feel guilty guilty is good and i'm going oh yeah 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 
but they don't understand frequency, Wendy. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Totally. So, totally. Um, so yes, hatred is not the best, but it's better than guilt. Absolutely. And, and I think what you're reiterating is like it paralyzes you, as we said earlier on, you know, it just, you know, you become incapacitated, you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's so encapsulating. It's so imprisoning that you then can't do anything. And as you just said there, feeling the feelings and having other emotions, it allows the energy to be kickstarted to actually identify. They do the- something about it. Yeah. 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 Because when you're in shame, get hypnosis, you're hypnotized to um, be destructive. Now, what a great, great method for somebody or something to make you a victim. It's the perfect thing. Do you know that Africa, oh, this is what, 20, 30 years ago, the apartheid. And, you know, if you ever read anything about that, how Africa was thriving and then all of a sudden it crumbled. Do you know how they got a whole country to become defeated? without war they use shame guilt Mm. that's how powerful shame guilt is it can actually destroy a civilization yeah it's so insidious isn't it it's just so into the uh, into the the, the the foundations of the of the human spirit and and it, it's like a fungus it just eats away it's, it's a leech it's a leech you can call it a shame guilt fungus i like that one too i don't i i let me know what names you come up with yeah it's so much fun i have no preference just that it's a it's a it's a it's a weapon of mass destruction <laughs> it is it is and it's and you know and it's good that we're having these kind of conversations, which is why I wanted you to come onto the podcast as well, because I feel uh, there's so many beautiful women that are part of our community that are, you know, are, are just slowly opening up to the concept of like, it's, you know, they don't want to be victims. They're not victims. That's why they're listening to me or reading my books and they, and they're, they're, they're at the beginning or they're stuck. They're they're stuck. stuck. They're on their journey. And of course, this is new. This is different. It took me a long, I wrestled with all of this, like it was my fault, you know, all these emotions and feelings and stuff that I had. I, I was shamed and guilt into being too sensitive and, oh, you can't take a joke and all that kind of stuff because it wasn't funny. And I was sensitive because what they're saying was not nice, you know. So rather than seeing things in the reality of what they were, the, the projections were to control and suppress and, you know, put shame, guilt upon. And, and I was was dying there wasn't a you know yeah. it was just like you have two years or one year it wasn't like when it was like yeah, yeah one or two. but I didn't have the information yeah for to pull me out yeah so I made it you, you know and when I found it it's like well people just have to know absolutely and but that's what I love that's why know. you and I are similar because I have to I know. Was total organ failure I was like probably six months away from, from death. No, I mean, I've mean, yeah. got the, 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 you know, the, the, the test to prove it. And like you, like there has to be another way. Like what is, if my finger can heal, why is my insides not healing? And why am I like incapacitated despite yes. the willpower and the drive, you know, and the passion. So when we've had those experiences, it's like our calling, it's like our mission. Like we, we have no choice because the idea of people languishing you know, in the states that we were in, it's just too much to bear. That's why you yeah. know, this information. And um, the shame guilt energy also blocks you from spirit. Like you're talking on the cell phone, this is God and this is you. And the shame guilt energy is distorting the conversation. You get static on the line. So Absolutely. it it affects your spiritual, your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy. It's a complete wipeout. It's so effective. Yeah. And they tell it to use it. <laughs> oh, oh, I still can't believe that. I still can't believe that. Well, look, Lewis, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And if there's a parting kind of inspiring phrase or statement that you'd want to make to the listeners, uh, what what would you want to, to leave them with? Be a Toto. <laughs> I love that. Be a Toto. And hopefully they know some of the millennials say, who are you talking about? I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so hopefully yeah. everybody knows about Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. But be a Toto. Be a Toto. That, that has to be your tagline. You know that because it's so intriguing. People are going, hey, what? What does that even mean? Be a Toto. 
<laughs> well, look, thank you so much. And keep in touch, Wendy. Keep in touch. Yeah, I'm going to pause this in a second and then we'll, we'll continue. Okay. That. But thank you so much for coming on. You're doing amazing. Blessings to all. Blessings and, to all. And, and be uh, a total. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, it's Wendy again, and I do hope that you enjoyed that wonderful interview with Lewis. It's very thought-provoking, isn't it, when we start to expand our level of awareness as to kind of what's going in on and around uh, us, our bodies, our, our energies. Um, and from a young age, I suspect if you're here and you're listening to this and you'd, you've suffered from endometriosis for a long, long time, it's that you have this high degree of sensitivity and you've been picking up whether it's intended projection or unconscious projection uh, projection of shame and guilt within the family or the generational ancestral line doesn't really matter the key thing is recognizing it for what it is and how to uh, start on your own journey now lewis has got some fabulous information available on her website and equally if you want some sort of guided support as to how to uh, really uncover and unravel that as well, then do consider joining our Unblock Emotional Blocks on the 21 Day Challenge. If you're feeling um, you may have emotions blocked, then probably it's because of the shame and the guilt that's keeping them blocked and not allowing you that connection to yourself that you deserve. And that's probably why your body is screaming at you to such high degrees for you to listen and pay attention when, of course, you just want to run away from it. So um, you can go to uh, lewishollis.com to get details from her. Equally, you can go to healendometriosisnaturally.com forward slash programs and read about the 21 day challenge, which is a wonderful way to start. Uh, again, do both get, you know, if you, if you feel that you resonate with uh, what Lewis and I were talking about, then it's important to really dive in and immerse yourself in this uh, po positive and supportive and inspiring content because you don't deserve to be in pain. Pain is a way of your body trying to get your attention, possibly because whatever uh, painful emotions and things have, have been uh, activated or triggered at a young age have been suppressed and shoved down. This was a concept that I struggled with. If you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you know that I go on about this. It's why I'm so passionate about it now. Um, the same with Lois, you know, you, you'll, you'll heard her story when she was 50. She was, you know, being told she'd lucky if she had a year to live know my story I was the same now look where we are now so if we can do it then I know you can too so um but the key thing is is to keep taking action keep moving forward um and um and enjoy the content and recognize that you are worth it so hope to speak to you soon and to your health bye Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.